people from the outside countries, they can see other than the fact that we live in constant wars. And it bothers me so much. They only see the side they want to see. They should look deeper. Hi, and welcome to the music scene. I'm your host, Stephanie DeGraw. And we're at Sundance, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And I'm very happy to be talking to the directors of the film Gaza, and they're going to be telling us about their amazing journey, how they met, and why they chose this particular very unique place in the world to do a film. And let's have you introduce yourselves and, and your part in this. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Gary Keane, and I'm co-director of Gaza. Hi, Stephanie. I'm Andrew McConnell. I'm also co-director. Gaza. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here. And you guys are all the way from Ireland. Mm -hmm, right. And it is interesting. I'll have you uh, tell us about how you met and how you actually grew up not that far apart, mm -hmm. but didn't know each other. It's true. Yeah, we met in 2012 when Gary was uh, making a documentary about Irish photographers. And so he contacted me and um, we got talking. And uh, yeah, quickly turned out we grew up 25 miles apart. That's amazing. In, yeah, in the north of Ireland. And um, we talked also about possible projects, and that's how we came on to Gaza. Now, I understand you had already been in that area and were covering as a, as a professional photographer, is that right? That's right, yeah. I originally am a photographer, and so I'd gone to Gaza in 2010 to document a group of surfers who lived in the Strip. Okay. And so that was sort of a fascinating story I felt really told a different side of what's happening in Gaza. and. Um, yeah, the, the film was sort of born out of that. Okay. And really, um, I think for all of us, we usually just think of that area as so war-torn, which it still is, unfortunately. But you guys um, take a different approach. Talk about the approach you decided to take. Well, it's because of that stereotype that mm -hmm. we, we went to such efforts in the initial stages anyway to try and get this film made because we, we both felt passionately that, that Kaz wasn't actually portrayed in any sort of proper light that there was only one perspective being taken and there was always conflict and right. everyone just focused in on that and media it was all media footage of the conflict and nobody ever really took the time to look beyond that or behind that and see the real people of Gaza the ordinary people of Gaza then we felt that both the images and the politics were letting down so we went in to try and redress that imbalance as we felt it was and let the real people, honest people, the ordinary people of Gaza, who have nothing to do with conflict, who have no aspirations or notions of, of getting involved or politics or anything right, like that. Right, they're just regular people. Regular people like you and me that just want, want the same things as we do, to have, have, you know, a roof over their heads and be able to feed their families and have a normal life. So that's that was the, the motivation behind the film, the, the narrative. And the images are, are quite striking from the trailer that I saw, that you have like a child playing, then suddenly there's bombs going off. And it's it's quite dramatic, just a little bit that I saw. Now, you were there quite a while. Um, five years, was it? Five years it took to make it all yes. together. Yeah. And, and like we said, you'd been there before. Um, how did you end up uh, deciding to focus on many people Versus a lot of films only focus in on one or mm. two people. And, and your approach seems to be a little different. Can you explain that? I'll let Andrew actually explain okay. that. Yeah. Well, that was a decision we took from the start mm -hmm. to, to make this tapestry piece, to show many different lives in Gaza, uh, rather than focusing on one or two people. Mm -hmm. And that allowed us to, to show sort of a broad range of different lives in Gaza. And from the small boy that you mentioned, um, to an old fisherman, to a young girl playing the cello, and uh, a taxi driver. It really allowed us to bring the viewer into this place, which is completely misunderstood, and show a different side of it, and show yeah. just what is life like in such a, you know, in the infamous place in the world. So if you think about it, and you think about documentaries that have singular characters or, or, or a small amount, three characters, 
they tend to be documentaries that focus on a particular theme or something because yes. you, and you get a few people or one person to mm -hmm. talk about it but when when you actually go in with the with the idea of telling the story of a place an entire place then it becomes it's imperative to to get a, a, a multitude of characters from different perspectives from different occupations walks of life young old male female um, and it's important really to do that in order to paint the, the picture of or to get some sort of a full understanding of yes. the, the, the society that, 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 that is there, you know. عايشين على أرض غزة على مساحة خمسة وعشرين ميل في سبعة. أنا ولدت جنب البحر وراح أعيش جنب البحر وأموت جنب البحر. أنا يمكن بس أنا يمكن في القطاع كله فيش واحد مخلف أربعين نفرة. And I think that's what is exciting about the film to me is that you um, painted such a broad stroke that I feel like I'm going to get to see and feel what it's like to be there versus just one little portion of it. Because you do have a really big variety of people that are in it. Um, when you were getting to know them, was there anything that they um, said that they wished for or any kind of... Um, thing that really struck you as an as their I guess it would depend where they are in their life but is are there some of the themes of their desires that they wanted obviously peace but what are there um, maybe did they want more access to education or did they want what's it like over there well there were those commonalities kind of, between yeah. all characters in terms of just a real desire desperation even for stability okay and then beyond that access to the outside world. I mean, these people are isolated, mm -hmm. confined in Gaza. Um, and there's restrictions, the blockade um, weighs heavy on everybody's lives there. So those commonalities bore out with everybody we spoke to that um, they're being suffocated because of the blockade. So they are pretty much stuck there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And, and that is like a living prison, I guess, in, in a sense. And that that, that word they... is used quite often. Yeah, and I don't know if that's too harsh. Or... It, well, it, it, in, in a broad sense, it's not. I mean, you know, that there, there aren't guards forcing them into their houses every night. It's not, it's not uh, people on the ground, but it is bordered and they are closed and they are hemmed in. I mean, the best way to describe the situation would be to give you an example that since when Sundance first contacted us at the end of November to say we were lucky enough to have the film selected, we, along with Sundance, decided that a lovely thing to happen would be for a couple of the contributors to right. come over to the festival. So we couldn't, through one reason or another, was a contributor on one of the producers, a fixer, sorry, the fixer on the ground over there. Um, we made plans, we got their visas, uh, you know, lined up, we got their interviews lined up in, in the American Embassy in Cairo, we got everything on the table with immigration lawyers in LA working on the case, wow. and unfortunately we couldn't get them out. Even after all that, it no, was just too they, complicated yeah, to bring them yeah. over here. Too complicated is one way of putting it, yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's it was, a mild yeah, thing. yeah. But so, the, as an example, I mean, there are very few places in the world that if you spent if that amount of energy was put into getting two right. people to visit the festival, I don't know if there's anywhere else that you couldn't really get people out mm -hmm. of, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So that's an example of how difficult it is and their situation. They are completely um, hemmed in, really. Yes. On all sides. Mm. Mm. Okay. And as far as um, culturally, uh, do they have access to really education? Um, I was surprised to see the cello player because I was assuming there wasn't a lot of opportunity for the music and arts. But what, what's it like as far as education and music over there? I mean, they do very well for what they have. I mean, yeah. they do extraordinarily well. I mean, the universities are over there. Okay. They, they have music schools. They have mm -hmm. you know, schools and teachers. Yeah. And f they're very smart, very yes. well-educated people, you know. Right. But they're doing it under the most severe conditions right. that you could possibly imagine, you know. So it's everything is difficult. Everything is so, so, so difficult, you know, and then you have a situation where people have to try and earn a little bit of money and children have to get involved in that, be it fit, or young fellow Ahmed who has to go fishing every day. So that interrupts any form of schooling that you can get. And well, that's true if so, they're trying to help their family. Of course. Financially. Ev everyone is trying to. School or help my family fish. Yeah, and they have, a, they have a great desire for, for education. They, mm -hmm. they, they, all of them, 
right. long for, for the best education they can. Yeah, so age. I mean, they, they want to need the same things as we all do. Yes. I mean, it does. There's no, there's there's nothing there's else no to say about it. There's they no just difference. Have them to live in yeah. this complicated place, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when you were um, doing it, did you obviously you were at least able to film over there? And, and did you have any complications though being over there? Were they concerned about um, what you were going to show in the movie, or did you have pretty free reign of the place to go shoot where you wanted to shoot? Yeah, we had mostly free reign to okay. work within Gaza. People Great. are, um, they're very welcoming and they're very happy that someone's there to tell their story. Yeah, so, so I was going to say, especially since it's more the real story of what it's actually like to live there, not mm -hmm. what side are you on or not. It's more, here's real people living a life, trying well, exactly. to live a life. And I think people were a little yeah. surprised by that. They were like, really, you want to film me? But yeah. Yeah. they didn't realize that their lives are so interesting. Mm. But the fact that they have to live against this backdrop of a blockade, of the repeated threat of um, conflict, means that um, everything that they do is takes on a sort of uh, a striving for a better life. Mm -hmm. And then within that is uh, are very powerful stories. And so that's what we try to, to hone in on and, uh, yeah. and develop through the film. And you've got some amazing footage, I must say. Um, it was, like I said, striking is the word that keeps coming to my mind when I saw the cello player with the burned out buildings behind her. You've got young boys that um, are swimming in the ocean every single day and, and playing. And um, it's just really a lot of contrast, but beautiful. Yeah, well, Andrew was the DOP yeah. on that as well, because yeah. that's his background as a mm, photographer. So right. he'd done an amazing job. Yeah. Well, I felt it was important to... Um, to show the beauty of the place and the vibrancy and that it's not all rubble and destruction right. and it's not you know um, the conflict happens but it's yeah. it's a small percentage of the time and most of the time it's um it's actually a really a really colorful vibrant place and so it's important to get a sense of that across mm -hmm. within the film um so that uh, people understand mm -hmm. that what they see usually in the news reports is um just the one view, I guess. It's apart, not representative of, of right, not the whole picture. Apart from that, but Mander is probably a little bit humble to say so. But um, his the quality of cinematography is mm -hmm. is incredible, and we wanted that. We wanted to bring that those sensibilities to Gaza because they're not seen in that light. You know, people in Gaza, are fil you know, the filming that is done there for the most part is not flattering. It's not real. It's not. It, you don't have and that it's sort new, of. It's like you know, a quick news kind of yeah. angle. But even the quality of it, to, to go there and make a film for the cinema, you know, yes, to make it of cinema quality, right. to, to actually spend the time composing and framing and, and lighting and giving them the, 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 the you know, giving them the, the chance to look the way people look in the cinema, to act, you know, to film things properly, to put together sequences properly, to create a proper film about them. You know, that, that's, that was really important for us, you know. Well, and that's where, you know, I don't, I'm sure you're the first people that have really taken that extra time to do it in that format. And that's showing off the richness of their lives because you did go in with the full plan of let's take the time to do it right. I mean, there have been and, other feature docs made in Gaza mm -hmm. and I'm, we're not in any way trying sure. to, to diss them, but we, I think we're the first doc that, that created a, 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 a space for so many characters and so much mm -hmm. real life and that's kind of where, where we differ from the from the rest you know yes and you've got because of your talent you've got kind of a scope sweeping i don't know how to describe it but just this magnitude of uh of the feel of the film in the way that you plan those shots to me i was just watching it on a computer and i'm thinking oh i want to go see it on the big screen because the care that you took to set up that shot versus just you know the news camera catching what they can i thought that was pretty dramatic well hopefully um, we have our premiere on tuesday yes. so we're hoping that's that, exciting that, 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 that's right yeah. the film's going to run. Mm. and you've been making the rounds um talking to <laughs> all the media yeah. mm. and this is your first time at sundance i mm, presume it is, yeah. uh -huh. uh, what are some of your impressions and experiences you've had 
it's a little overwhelming when you get here first you know it's that we we're only here since friday so we're really just kind of getting used to the lie of the land at the moment but it's been remarkably friendly and exciting and and there's a buzz about the place that's like no other i imagine i've been to yes. film festivals before mm -hmm. and and this is quite unique and it's it's because it's in such a, a lovely quaint small town as well it's not in a big city where there's screenings 50 miles apart and there right. seems to be no nucleus it's that's... all in one spot so that makes it you know incredibly unique so yeah we're here until mm. and seven. people I've heard of the film, which mm. we're really quite happy about. People Already? are excited to see yes. the film. And some have Good. said, oh, you've you're, got you're... some buzz. Mm. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's um, very encouraging. It's very exciting. Yes. It really is. It really is. Because there's mm. so many amazing films that come into Sundance. Mm. And to be picked is an honor. And then to already have the buzz out there on the ground is exciting. And like you said, because we're so condensed, um, the minute I stepped foot on Main Street the other day, I felt it. And it was that energy of all the creativeness of all these people so passionate about let's tell a story mm. of um, our perspective or someone else's perspective of a pl or a magical place like where you're at that's got the contrast of people trying to live ordinary lives in a very different place. Yeah, and well, there's a great energy in Sundance. And for us, I mean, it's the best possible start for the film. Yes. To have a documentary accepted in Sundance mm -hmm. is, you know, for, for our careers, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a... A great achievement. We're very proud of it. And yes. so we just hope that now we can put this out into the world and um, we'll see how it goes. We Absolutely. And um, like it. I won't ask you, I'm dying, if you want to share, if you have anybody that's talking to you about distribution yet. Or um, I know that that's a big thing. People come in and, and seek out distribution. I don't know um, what your plan for distribution is, if you care to share it, or you're just going to wait and see what happens. Well, Film, Film Option International are distributors, and then they're sharing okay. the, the American distribution with Cinetic. Great. Um, so, so that's all set. That's all Those set and ready to go. Taken yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to put across about the film that I haven't touched on? Um, no, we covered, you covered quite a lot. I suppose that the... The, the overall message we'd like to deliver is that we want to make something that allowed people, as we think, it, the, a first access, a real first access mm -hmm. to Gaza, you know, to, 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 to strip away the stereotypes and to, to open Gaza up to be to being seen in a proper light, mm -hmm. you know, and that the ordinary people speak for themselves and, and you know, just try and appeal to the world. You know, we, we feel as they do that, you know, the entire world has let them down not just mm -hmm. you know internally and externally everybody is really letting them down politics is letting them down right the international it's like they're community. forgotten except for when you see oh another mm -hmm. bombing over there yeah so don't, don't think about it so if this film does yeah. anything if it does nothing more than shed light on that and get people to, to understand and think about gaza and the, the ordinary people behind all of the the news right. items then i think we've done as much oh, as yes, we can to do. make people aware mm -hmm. And I was surprised at how cheerful some of the people were in the film. And then I thought, no, they're just normal people trying to live their lives. And like you said, they just want to be happy like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Any final exactly. thoughts? Well, you know, they are wonderful people and living under really difficult circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that this brings a sense of understanding of the reality over there. Mm -hmm. And because when there's stereotypes put forward, um, I think there's a sort of a fear of different peoples and um, especially in the Middle East, there's a lack of understanding of how um, life is for those people over there. And so if anything, if it can bring some understanding and then pr help promote some sort of change, I think. Yes, that would be, be exciting. The best You're in a great on. position as far as when you make a film, who knows what kind of impact this could have. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because it really could be a vehicle for some real positive change. That would and be amazing. The, we hope so. I mean, film by itself, I don't think, can create change. We would be naive to think that right. a film alone could change but things. But to motivate but, the rest of us. But it's an important part yeah. of a process. Yeah. And right. that's what our hope would be, that we are part of a wider process of uh, promoting change and promoting understanding. If you can't get in on the dialogue to help change, then, you know, you you know, if you, if you if you feel passionately about something, you have to get involved. And this is our way of getting involved in the discussion and trying to raise the raise the profile of the real understanding of the place and trying to just bring that home to people that at the end of the day it's, it's ordinary people trying to live lives and it's as simple as it is that's all we're trying to say yeah. give people a chance to live a normal life you know great well thank you so much it's, it's been a real pleasure and mm. very insightful and i'm 
Really looking forward to seeing Good, the rest you. of the film. Thank Great. you so Thanks much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank, Thank you. And you've been watching the music scene. I'm your host, Stephanie DeGraff from Sundance.